Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and you're all welcome to this Fundamentals of Digital Marketing, which is being offered by Tadita Group Institute. So this is the foundation of digital marketing, and uh, since we are actually still introducing this aspect of digital marketing in the Institute, we thought it wise that we should actually give out this uh, program for free. So you must be, uh, it, it should be an opportunity for you to grab this knowledge while it is still free for everyone, because in our next um, sitting, it's not going to be the same, okay? So we are going to be walking you guys through the digital marketing landscape, and I'm going to be doing that with uh, a co-tutor by name, Ms. Uh, Bime Lira. So she's equally going to be coming on board um, when the need arises, okay? So, my name is Tamon Diodone. I am the CEO and co-founder of Tadita Group Institute, and I'm equally in charge of the digital marketing department. So the Tadita Group Institute is a virtual institute for entrepreneurs, which is located here um, in the United Arab Emirates. Okay, and we don't only offer uh, digital marketing courses, we equally offer uh, courses such as human resource management. Uh, we have um, entrepreneurship and development. We have the building information modeling. That's for entrepreneurs. That's for engineers and architects. Okay. We equally have data analysis. We have graphic design. We have web design. We have MS uh, Office. That's data processing as well. So with time, we are equally going to be introducing other courses. So all our courses are offered 100% online. And you have the opportunity to obtain um, globally recognized certifications after every uh, course. Okay, so after every course, you're going to obtain a globally recognized certification from either from CPD located in UK or in the or from Google, which is located in the United States of America. Please, before we continue, always ensure your mic is mute at every given moment. Prince, I have been muting your mic, but you keep on. On muting your mic so please make sure your mic is mute so that we can have a free flow of the class okay so here is just uh, a little bio or a little information about myself okay so i'm a i am an mba holder in banking tax administration and financial services i'm a google uh, cpd and uh, khd is certified in digital marketing okay and I'm currently working here in UAE as a marketing manager at uh, Madina Alwadi. So it's a privilege to have you all in our midst today. And I believe that by the end of this one week training we are going to have, you should go home with something very, very reasonable. You should have laid a very good foundation as far as digital marketing is concerned. And I believe that you're going to learn from, from my co-colleague and I and of course, we are equally going to learn a lot from you guys as well. So stay tuned. Make sure you attend every single session. Now, to be eligible for any certification, like I said before, this is a free course. And we are not issuing certificates for this training. But if you want a certification, we are going to give you the criteria which you need to follow in order to obtain a certificate for this course. Because normally, it's supposed to be a paid course. And obviously, we issue certificates after the course, but since the course is free, the aspect of certification only comes on request. So we are going to give you the criteria in the forum after this first class. So for those who want to get certificates after this training, uh, you can either, you can follow the procedure. And of course, we are going to provide you certificates at the end of the training program. So here are just some of my certifications from London International Studies, from Google, from UAE, okay? and from um, Kalig University of Cameroon as well. So this is just a briefing of um, certified digital marketing experts that, we, that graduated last year. Uh, the Cameroon students, we actually came to Cameroon and we issued out their certifications there in Cameroon. So it was really an amazing event with the presence of Madam Shika and uh, Mr. Heda Bila all the way from India. So here is our accreditation. So Tadita Group Institute is accredited to Google, it's accredited to CPD, and we equally have a professional license, which means it has been registered here in the United Arab Emirates. Okay, so 
That is just a briefing about the Institute. And I hope that at the end of this training, you should have grabbed a lot from the training program. So here are some of our tutors. So we have tutors from the various sectors, from uh, digital marketing, from the BIM master program, from uh, data analysis, human resource management, and so on. Right. So we really so, and so sorry we cannot see you as green. Sorry. Sorry, we cannot see you as screen. It's entirely black. Oh, thank you for that. Um, All right. Is it okay now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Sorry for that. So let me just take it back to. Okay, yeah, thank you for that correction. So, like I earlier mentioned, this is a biography. This is my biography, right? Um, an MBA holder, a certified digital marketing expert from Google, from CPD, and from KHDA. I'm equally the co-founder of the Data Group Institute, and I equally live and work here in the United Arab Emirates. I am the marketing manager of uh, Madina Alwadi. Okay, so with time, we're going to we we'll get to get to know each other and we are going to share so many great ideas, okay? Uh, Prince, please make sure your mic is muted. Your mic is interrupting with our class. You can unmute your mic when you have a question, but please make sure your mic is mute, okay? Please, it's very important. All right, thank you. All right, so like I earlier mentioned, these are some of my certifications from Google, from KSDA, from UAE, and from the Kalig University as well. And here are some, uh, they are students who graduated from the digital marketing and the BIM master program last year in Cameroon. And it was really a privilege to have Madam Shika and Heda Bila all the way from India. They are the ones who have really helped the Institute in terms of its registration in terms of expanding to other countries and be able to have the accreditations which we have. They have really helped a lot and it was a privilege having them in Cameroon for this very great um, event. And here are some of our registrations. So that group is registered here in UAE, all right? So that we have our professional license and equally registered with CPD as well, which is located in UK. So that's where some of your Certifications will be coming if you wish to take some of our advanced courses. And of course, here are some of our tutors. We always ensure that we get our tutors who are who really understand the field very well and equally have a very high level of um, education and have a mastery of what we are actually giving you guys. So you're going to come in contact with some of these tutors as well because we equally have other courses which will be coming up and some of these courses too, we have the, the, the introductory phase. So you're going to learn more about some of the courses. And of course, if you want to um, grow in these departments, you are free to do so. So for the next one week, we are going to be talking about digital marketing. Okay, We are going to expand. We are going to build your knowledge as far as digital marketing is concerned. And of course, we're going to have our co-colleague, uh, Ms. Bime Lira. Uh, who is equally going to be handling an aspect of digital marketing. So in today's class, I'm going to be taking you guys memory lane, or taking you back memory lane. We look at how uh, digital marketing has been structured from the time it was, from the time of uh, when it was conceived and how it has grown right up to 2023. This is very, very important because if you have to get into this field, you should know what this field is all about. Majority of you have been hearing the word digital marketing, but you don't really know what this digital marketing is. You actually get confused between digital marketing and other fields, okay? You get confused between digital marketing and traditional marketing. So we are going to actually build your knowledge, your understanding about this. You try to get um, a historical background about digital marketing. And of course, from there, we can now get into the practical aspect of it. Now, another thing which I want to emphasize on is that if you are one of the criteria, one of the criteria for you to actually get a certification after this training is that you need to attend all the trainings. You need to attend every training program that we are going to have. This is to ensure that you've actually had a mastery because for the fundamental training program, before we give certifications, normally you are supposed to uh, 
um, sit down for a brief exams, for a brief exam, then we issue certificates at the end. But since it's a free certificate, it's, free, it's a free training, we are not going to really give you uh, maybe some evaluation, but to be sure that you've actually followed the training program, uh, we want to ensure that you've attended all the training programs. And of course, after this, before we end the class, we're going to take a brief roll call and we are going to do that for the next um, six days or so. And that is from, it's from there which we are, that is one of the criteria for you to be able to um, get certificates at the end of this training program. So let's look at the concept of digital marketing. Most of you have heard about digital marketing before uh, you have your own understanding about digital marketing. But before we get into the concept, can someone tell me what he or she understands by the word digital marketing? Anyone? If you've heard about digital marketing before, can you just tell us what you understand by the word digital marketing? Can I try, sir? Yes, go ahead. Uh, what I understand about digital marketing is uh, network, like exposing a product to a particular country or a particular, yeah, particular uh, country or particular community in in by uh, social media, social media, something like that. Okay, <laughs> That's just right. what I understand. Okay, so what I've been able to get from your definition is is network. You're trying to to build a network, you're trying to expose your products out there. Wow, great. Yes. Person, any other person? Who else? Yes. Kang? Kang? Click Smiler? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, I think digital marketing uh, is a type of marketing that deals mostly with internet, where you don't need to see your customers or your sellers physically. So there are things that are being done uh, online or using available uh, internet related uh, applications or structures. Wow, great. Thank you. Fantastic, great, uh, fantastic. I love that definition. Any other person? Any other person? Okay, great. So Chris talked about network. Wow, that is great. Um, Kang equally talk, Kang talked about um, using digital tools. Okay, now I'm going to tell you what is wrong with your definition. Um, Praise, you talked about networking, right? It's like you're talking about exposing your product. But now when it comes to digital marketing, it's not only about exposing product, but you need to do what? You need to use digital tools. Okay, you need to use digital tools. And secondly, it's not all about products. It's not all about you selling a product. It's about you creating what we call engagement. It's about you creating what we call advertisement. It's about you creating what we call awareness. So what is digital marketing? Digital marketing is the act of um, creating awareness, all right? Trying to showcase your products, your services, or a particular upcoming event with the help of what? Digital tools. And there are so many digital tools out there. We have uh, the internet itself. Okay, then we have social media platforms, we have websites as well. So when you use these tools to showcase products, services, or events, okay, or when you use these tools to create what we call awareness, so you're telling somebody about an event coming up, you're telling somebody about a particular product, particular service, not only for the purpose of sales or to make profit, but the purpose of what? Communication. So once you're able to communicate with someone in respect to a particular event, product, or services using digital tools, that is what digital marketing is all about. So once you are able to share a particular information and your audience are able to receive this information with the help of the internet, then digital marketing has taken place. Now, how can you differentiate this, between, differentiate this with um, the traditional way of marketing? You all know that uh, if you have your products right now, if there was no internet, so the time when we didn't have internet connections, we actually did marketing, but we used what? The traditional way. And how was this done? We had to design maybe flyers, we designed um, posters, we post them around, right? We tried to advertise our product traditionally. 
We go to the media, we go to radio stations, TV stations to pass, to communicate our idea. We move on the streets with speakers, making loud noise, talking to people about our products or services or an event coming up. So when you talk to people using all these traditional means, that is what we call traditional marketing. Now, with digital marketing, you are taking what you've been doing traditionally to the digital space. That is what digital marketing is all about, as simple as that. So digital marketing is not all about sales, no. Once you're able to advertise a product, once you're able to, to create awareness, people are, able, people are able to know about an event coming up, they are able to know about your product or service, digital marketing has taken place. So they can know about that product, but they don't actually purchase the product. It doesn't mean digital marketing has not taken place. Okay, so as you move along this digital marketing, if you come to understand that as a digital marketer, your job is not to close sales. Your job is not to make sales. Your job is to communicate particular products or services to individuals or a community of people. Once you've communicated this and it has actually reached out to them, then your job is done. We take an example. If we say Bamenda has 1 million people, and uh, your target is to reach out to about 500,000 people. Okay? If you create an ad on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or on a website, okay, and 500 people successfully see this ad, which you have just created, then your job as a digital marketer is done. If they don't come back to buy the product, that is not your problem. Okay? Because you've actually done your job, you've actually as you've actually uh, seminated this information to the audience. So once they have been able to receive that information, then your job as a digital marketer is done. So in the internet and social media age, customers can come from what? Practically everywhere. You can showcase your products everywhere. So when it comes to digital marketing, you can advertise your products in Yaoundé, in Bamenda, in Nairobi, in, um, in um, Lagos, Abuja, and so on. You can reach out to those people. But for the traditional way of marketing, if you're in Bamenda, you have your small boutique, right? You cannot, you cannot advertise your products to people who are not in that particular environment. It's very difficult. Sometimes people don't even go to radio station. They just sit at home or they just sit in their store and they are waiting for customers. Some people don't even design flyers or posters. They just sit and they want miracle to happen and customers should troop in into their businesses. That is why when you see businesses that have reached a particular level, people that are making lots and lots of money is because they have spent money on what? On advertisement. They have spent money on what? On marketing. MTN, Cameroon, Orange, they have escalated. They have taken all over the country because of what? Digital marketing. Dangote has taken all over the world because of what? Digital marketing. Why is Dangote known as the richest person in Africa? Why has his products been able to reach out to other African countries? Thanks to digital marketing, he has been able to achieve that. We are able to hear advertisements about Dangote cement, Dangote sugar, and so on. Digital marketing is a set of marketing tactics used to influence potential customers who look into online world. So you are able to use these tools, these, digital, these marketing tools, to do what? To, to capture potential customers who are connected in the digital world. So it leverages the power of different digital marketing channels. So you need the digital marketing channels to be able to do what? To reach out to your audience. So some of these digital marketing channels include, we have Google search, we have social networks. So Google search is when you go to your browser. You have your, um, your Google browser, right? You go there, you search for something. When you search for something, that information did not just appear there. People had to put in those information. And that is what a, a form of what? Marketing. Form of what? Advertisement. So people were able to create those information and place on a website. So when you type a particular word, if that word matches with what somebody had placed on the internet, then that information is going to appear to you who have done the search. That's what we call Google search. We have social networks. If a comedian does not post a video online, you will not be able to see that video. Okay? If, let's say, um, let's say 
a platform, an educational platform, if they don't post educational content on their site, you will not be able to see that information. Okay? So some of the digital channels include Google Search. We have social networks like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We have emails. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that sometimes you open your email? How many of you have, have email addresses? Just indicate with the hand show. How many of you have email addresses? Okay, Kang has, Mariam has, Singi has, Alain has. Okay, great. Now, how many of you have noticed that sometimes when you open your email address, you keep receiving messages from people you don't even know. You keep receiving messages from accounts you don't know. That you just sit and you receive a message, right? Under normal circumstances, only those who have your email address are supposed to send you a mail. And you should actually recognize those sending you that mail. But sometimes when you see it, you open your email address, you keep receiving email, uh, emails from people that you don't know. That is what we call email marketing. And as a digital marketing expert, you should know how to create uh, email marketing. So that is another digital marketing channel. Then we have the website, of course, the model of them all, website. Without a website, we cannot even talk about digital marketing. If you decide to shut down websites today, then that is it when it comes to digital marketing. Because before social media platforms came into existence, there was what? The website. If we close down Facebook today, the Facebook website, just know that all your social media, the, the Facebook um, application which you have will become useless because these applications do get their information from the website. So the website is the model of digital marketing. So it leverages the power of different digital marketing channels such as Google search, social networks, emails, and websites to generate favorable actions from current and what? prospective customers. So with all these digital channels, we can be able to get information from them. With all the digital channels, we can be able to advertise our products, our services, and our events to our local audience. Please, if you have a question, there will be time for questions. Just take a pen, piece of paper, write down your questions, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask your question. All right, so from what I've just explained, now we have a very good definition of digital marketing. So digital marketing is a process of building and maintaining what? Customer relationship through online activities to do what? To facilitate the exchange of what? Ideas, products, and services that satisfy the goals of both parties. So the process of building and maintaining customer relationships so we have not said that digital marketing is the, is the process of selling products online. We've not said it's a, it's a process of selling services. We've said it's a process of what? Building and maintaining customer relationship through what? The online activities. So we either exchange products during digital marketing, we exchange services or what? Ideas. Ideas include, I can decide to organize a digital marketing event today, okay? An online free event. Now, I'm not going to receive any payment from that. So I've not sold anything, right? But digital marketing already took place. From the moment I created that advertisement and people were able to see and get connected and join the training program, digital marketing already took place. Those are things you need to understand. My next question is, why do people go online? Why do you go online? Why do you go online? How many of you have, how many of you actually use Google today? If you use Google today, indicate and tell me what you searched on Google. How many of you use Google today? Or oh, how many of you have used Google in the past week? Or within the week? Let's get the hands, guys. Yes, Miriam, I'll begin with you. What did you use Google for? What did you actually search on Google? Maria. A singi. What did you search on Google? Guys, just unmute your mic and give us what you searched on Google. If you if you actually went to Google within the week, tell me what you actually searched on Google. For me, I search, I use Google every day. Okay, yes. Tell me what you actually did on Google. 
I use Google every day. Today, I did my research. There was a particular meal I wanted to do. I used my research. I entered my Google and I did my research. There was a particular, there are some particular things I want to know. So I'm always on Google. Okay, perfect. Uh, you use your, your you use Google to carry out research. Okay, yes. Itel Light, Itel Light. I don't know who that is. Yes. What did you use Google for? It's a um, man. I go search one of my research materials. Online. Okay, research. Okay, who else? Yeah, I. Yesterday I had to Google search. Um, I know about a certain Christian organization who want to partner with me and sponsor my projects. Great. Research. You wanted to get more knowledge, research. Mariam said, I used, mm -hmm. uh, I searched for acknowledgement receipt. Okay, great. So majority of you actually went online to do research, right? But there are so many reasons why people go online. Research is just one of them. Okay. And let's look at some of these reasons. People go online to attend meetings, okay? So, you guys are online right now, and you are attending an online session. So, that is one reason why people go online. People go online to get what? Business contacts. For example, if you want to actually expand your business, and you're thinking of getting people who can partner with you, you can actually go online and you search. I want to search for the construction companies in Cameroon. I want to search for accounting firms in Cameroon. So you do those research and you're able to get this information, business contact. You go online to do what? To get new employees. How many of you here are on LinkedIn? How many of you know of LinkedIn and how many of you are using LinkedIn? Anybody? Okay. My name is on LinkedIn. Who else? Okay. Kang? Great. So most companies go on LinkedIn to search for employees. Very, very important. Not only LinkedIn, there are several different websites which you can actually uh, get there if you want to search for employee or if you want to get a job as well, you can use these uh, platforms, okay? So some people go on online for what? General information, that's research, okay? So there are several reasons why people go online. All right, so let's look at some digital marketing objectives. So one way to make sure you are found on the web is with an optimized digital marketing strategy. Most digital marketing strategies and campaigns have the following five objectives. So some of this, everything, everything that has to do with digital marketing boils down to these five major objectives, okay? The first objective is what? Reaching the right audience. So if you are going online, you want to advertise your product, your services, or an event coming up, you are actually trying to target what? The right audience. For example, if I want to, if I want, um, to, to run a digital marketing class or a digital marketing training program, actually, I'm going to go online and I'm going to be searching for those who are interested in becoming digital marketing experts. So I am struggling to get what? The right audience. All right? The next objective is what? To engage with your audience. So... You actually go online to be able to have that interaction with your audience. When people post questions online, it, it prompts for what? Answers. People are always going to come and answer. When you post an article or you post your picture or whatever you post online, people always come there. They will like, they, they will like the post. Some people will share. That is what we call engagement. So, so many people go online just to do what? To get that engagement. And engagement is a very vital aspect of digital marketing. So if you actually, you have a product, a service, or you're trying to build a relationship online and there is no engagement, then you have not actually achieved that goal of what? Digital marketing. So engagement must be there before any other thing comes to play. The next objective is to promote your audience to take action, right? So when I created a digital marketing campaign for the fundamentals of digital marketing class, now there is always that, button where you need to click on it, you sign up and you fill in, you fill in your credentials and you sign up. That is what we call um, engagement. That is what we call taking action, sorry. So you are causing people to take action. You may cause people to do what? To buy a product online. So you may see that button shop now. You are causing someone to do what? To take action. 
Okay, so the next objective is what? Efficient spending on your campaign. Now we're going to talk about paid advertisements later on subsequently. So when it comes to digital marketing, there are two types. We have the organic and the paid. Organic simply means you create free ads. All the ads which you create where you are trying to get people are for free. Most of you do that on a daily basis. Then we have what we call the paid ad. So if you really want to expand, if you really want to get this right audience, you really want to specify your audience, then you need to pay for that service. And we're going to talk about that as well. Then we have what we call return on investment. Obviously, you actually want to get a return on what you have invested online, right? So if you are spending, let's say, $10 online to, to be able to um, get your audience, you should be able to get back that, that return, okay? So when I talk about spending, it's not all about you creating the ads, okay? Just paying someone to design a flyer for you, you've spent, right? Just um, trying to pay someone to create a video for you or to adjust your page for you, all those are, those are all aspects of what? Spending. So you've actually spent and you actually want to get a return on that investment which you have done, okay? So... Digital marketing goes, so what is the goal as far as digital marketing is concerned? So digital marketing is all about what? Generating sales and or what? Capturing leads from customers that are searching on the internet for answers, okay? So you're actually out there to do what? To create sales, to generate sales, or you want to get leads from people who are searching for a particular, people who have problems and need solutions, okay? So that's the reason why I said digital marketing is not all about sales, okay? But you're actually creating that engagement. Okay, you're actually linking up with people, trying to solve people's problems. That is what we call digital marketing. Now, let's take you back to memory lane. Some of you don't even know how digital marketing came to existence. Digital marketing is a very, it's a recent field. So many people don't know about this field. Okay, this field is still very, very young in African countries, especially Cameroon. Digital marketing has not even has not even grown up to 5% in Cameroon. And just of recent, the Cameroon government has even been, they have been trying to remove an aspect, some aspect of digital marketing, which I see that is very, very vital, but they are struggling to do what? They have been doing, taking decisions which are affected. Maybe they, are, they, don't, they, they don't actually know that the decisions which they are taking affect digital marketing, okay? It is affecting it indirectly, and I'm going to explain to you why that is. But now let's look at how digital marketing actually uh, started. So the term digital marketing was first used in the 1990s, along with the coming of the internet and the development of the web 1.0 platform. Now, when the internet came to existence, there was nothing like marketing, okay? Remember, marketing means that you must have that interaction. You must have that engagement with your audience. So if there is no engagement with your audience, then we can't talk about marketing, okay? So with the coming of the internet, uh, people could not really communicate with others, all right? You could just go online, for example, you can access Wikipedia and you just read information. You don't even know who placed that information there. You don't even know how you can interact with those who are sharing that information. So when the internet was created, there was nothing like liking, sharing, or contacting someone. There were no contacts and so on. That's what we mean by the Web 1.0 platform. So you just go to the internet, you just see an information on the internet and you're able to use that information, okay? So there, is, there was a platform which there was a, a, a program which I used uh, that's before the internet really came to existence and was really, uh, had, had really grown this, vibe, uh, this wide. There was a program which I used, um, uh, we call it Encata. Is it Encata? Yes, Encata which actually had information about things that had happened, but it was very limited. So that is how digital marketing actually started growing. Okay, that is how the internet started growing. So we, on that platform, when you access that platform, you only have information and it is going to be limited to the date the, plat the, 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 the tool was released. For example, if Encata was released in 2015, then any information which you're going to get from Encata is going to end at 2015. So if you're having a 2015 version in 2020, you're not going to have any information after 2015. Okay? That is just how the internet was existing. That's how it was when it was created. Okay? So during the Web 1.0 age, there was no such thing as what interaction. I already explained that. You could not communicate with people. So 
as the only activity was what reading of content you could only go to the internet and you read content you cannot interact with those who had created that content All right so in 1990 actually the world first search engine was born okay so before yahoo came to existence before google came to existence Archie was there. That is the platform which we used during that period to be able to carry out research. Okay. And after this period, that is when we had what banner arts. So banner arts now were created in 1993. Now, when we talk about banner art, we talk about the flyers, which you see designs on them, images. Okay. During that period, you could not have images on a website. There was nothing like that. You only have text upon text. There was no beauty. No, very beautiful. Those beautiful designs were not there. During that period, websites were just designed with coding, the HTML coding. Okay? So you could not really see the beauty. What we are seeing now was not existing during that period. So, Yahoo now was launched in 1994. I know most of you don't even use Yahoo now. Some of you don't even know. How many of you here know Yahoo? Just put up your hand. We are not talking about Yahoo Yahoo here, please. The Yahoo platform. How many of you here you know Yahoo? And how many of you have used Yahoo before? Keep the Gmail aside. We talk about a Yahoo, like Yahoo search engine. Okay, great. I'm very happy uh, majority of you have used that before. So before Google came into existence, we had the Yahoo. Okay, Yahoo, you could actually do search. You could actually do your research on Yahoo. And we equally had an... After Yahoo was created, we equally had what we call the Yahoo Messenger. I don't even know if it still exists. Yahoo Messenger came in and it was like a new technology that, was, that just emerged. Where you can actually, that was a time people could actually interact with others using the Yahoo Messenger. So when this Yahoo was launched in 1994, it provoked what extensive changes in the digital marketing space with companies optimizing their websites to pull in higher search engine rankings. So when Yahoo actually came into existence, that is when digital marketing now gradually came to existence. Because with the launching of the Yahoo, we had the Yahoo Messenger, we had the Yahoo Mail, people could interact with others. You could actually, now you, you hardly hear somebody having the, uh, having the email, having an email address that carries Yahoo. Almost everybody now has what? Gmail, Gmail, Gmail. But during that period, we had the Yahoo Mail, and I still have my Yahoo Mail up to now, and that is what I'm still using. I use Gmail just once in a while. Okay? So, in 1998, that is when Google came into existence. So, you see, after four years, that is when Google came into existence. So, we had the Google, we, have the, we had the MSN, we had the Yahoo web search. Okay? So, smaller search engines were wiped out, and the internet bubble started to burst. Now, when Yahoo was created, when it came to existence, um, platforms like Anchi, okay? Anchi, which was the first search engine, was wiped out. So we didn't have that in existence again, okay? The, the first mobile marketing campaign, what we call the Universal Music, was launched to in 2001. Before then, we didn't really have social media platforms, okay? Then, in 2002, 2002, 2003, we had the LinkedIn platform, okay? The LinkedIn platform, I think that is one of the oldest social media platforms, though it is not as vibrant as the others, but it is one of the oldest social media platforms, okay? So in 2002, 2003, that platform was created. Then in 2004, Gmail was launched and Google actually went public. Google had been existing, but it actually went public and Facebook equally went live. So that, is when, so that is when Facebook actually, people actually knew about Facebook. So Mark Zuckerberg was still building everything in the pipeline and they actually launched it in 2004. And by then there was nothing like mobile applications to only access Facebook on the internet. Okay? How many of you here know Amazon? Who, who knows Amazon? If you know Amazon, just indicate. If you've heard about Amazon before. Amazon. Okay, okay. So, um, so Amazon's e-commerce sales surpassed the 10 billion mark in 2006. Now, Amazon is, a, is an e-commerce platform that sells products online, okay? If you want to buy products online, you can order your products on Amazon and they are going to deliver the product to you. Now, 
before Amazon actually um, went public, they started with the sales of books, okay? They started with the sales of books. That was the first product that Amazon started selling online. So they decided to gradually notice that books were not really um, giving them that income which they needed. So they decided to do what, add other products and services. Even Amazon equally, at the, at the moment now, they even sell food. You can order food even from Amazon. So they keep on bringing in new um, products or services to their platform. So in 2011, the web use overtakes figures for TV viewership. So in 2011, the internet had to take, the internet took over from what? How many, they took over from um, television. I believe now so many people don't even watch the television again. I'm sure there are some people here who have stayed even for a week without even, what I, they, they ask themselves, what are they even watching on the TV? But they are always on their smartphones. From morning to evening, you can be on your smartphone. You don't even care about the television. Maybe you actually go to the TV to watch um, programs which you cannot access on your, on your smartphone. Though some of those programs can be accessed on the smartphone, but you need to pay for them. So you actually go to the internet. Some of you have your, your, your series, which that's the only time you even switch on the television. So if, it was, if we only had maybe a CRTV in Cameroon, I am sure 40% of the population will not even tune into CRTV. They will have other things to do. Okay, so in 2011, then the internet had, the internet actually overtook um, TV viewership. Okay, 2014, mobile exceeds PC internet usage. People now started using their mobile devices more than computer systems. Okay, then in 2015, we had the rise of predictive analytics, content marketing, and wearable technology. So data analysis now started existing, content creation now started existing. And so on and so forth. That's just to tell you that the internet is still very young. Digital marketing is still very young. 2015 was just yesterday, right? How many years ago? Just about 10 years ago. So digital marketing is still very new and a vital field. Like I always say, any digital marketing expert today, just know that in the next five years, people are going to be looking for you. People are going to be looking for you. So where is digital marketing now? Where is digital marketing now? So 82% have a clearly defined digital marketing strategy. So for the total number of people who are online, okay, we already have about 82% who actually know what they are doing online. Okay, so people are either people are actually disseminating information or people are actually doing what? Receiving the information. We already have more than 1,876 marketing uh, technology vendor. 60% of marketers planning to do or to increase their investment in technology this year, okay? Of the $540 billion allocated by companies and brands for advertising and marketing initiatives, 69% will be used for what? Content management, performance optimization, and website development. Web design is the key. Web design is the core when it comes to digital marketing. Without a website, you can't talk about social media platform because every social media platform is connected to the internet. If I don't have a smartphone, I can connect to, the, I can connect to Facebook with my PC. If I don't have a smartphone, I can connect to LinkedIn with my PC because all these informations are there and the mobile applications just help to have access to what is online. That's the reason why if we have web developers here, you notice that when you're designing your website, they'll always tell you to do what? Create a website which is what? Mobile friendly. People can easily access that website on their mobile without any problem. So search is gradually shifting beyond what? Search engines. So people are no longer really doing their research most of the times on search engines. Some people do their research on social media platforms, okay? You can even just go online on your Facebook and you type the richest person on earth. And Facebook will give you the information. If you go to the search bar, they will give you the information in terms of what images and what videos, not only in text format. Or they are going to give you platforms that are giving you, that are sharing such information. So at the forefront of expanded search, at the forefront of expanded search are social networks that have integrated search algorithms and what capabilities into their 
features. So, so many platforms have in, have in talk, have, have um, integrated search in their platforms. Like Facebook, if you go to Facebook, you can search for something. If you go to Pinterest, you can search for something. If you go to LinkedIn, you can search for something and you're going to get results. So search engines are actually gradually, they are losing towards social media platforms. That is why most of the companies that do have search engine platforms are actually creating mobile applications as well because they know that if they don't do that, they are going to face a lot of difficulties. The population of the world as at now is 7 billion, right? We have averagely 7 billion. Um, we have approximately 7 billion people in the world. Now, let's look at the total number of people that are connected to the internet. So in developed countries, as in the first world countries, we have 753 million in 2008, okay? And 1.2 billion in 2016 that are connected to the internet. In developing countries like the third world countries, we have 808 million. They are connected in 2008, and we have 2.46 billion in 2016. Now, the irony, the irony about this is that the less developed countries are more connected to the internet, but they are using, they are the lowest people that are using this internet for digital marketing. Because we don't, really, we, we, we don't really look at digital marketing as a thing, okay? We don't really believe in digital marketing. We only use it to cash crews. That's why if you use TikTok in Africa, you're just going to be seeing rubbish, people posting all sorts of things. Go to China and see the content they are sharing. Now, TikTok has been built, the algorithm of TikTok has been built in China in such a way that people who live in China, they only see what educative content on their TikTok account. But in Africa, we only be seeing our comedian. In fact, those are the people that are even using these social media platforms. We have our community. You will hardly see any educative materials. The only way you can really start seeing educative materials on your TikTok platform is when you start linking up to what? To educative um, accounts. Then you will start seeing those information. But trust me, Africans don't do that. Africans don't get connected with platforms that will give them more information. That is why the algorithm in these countries have been restricted. In the United Arab Emirates, they have blocked so many platforms. You can't have access to them. You can't have access to pornographic uh, platforms in the United Arab Emirates. You can't do so in China. And they have made sure that they have built their algorithm in such a way that the only information you can actually keep, you can be receiving are what? Educative information. But countries like India, countries like Pakistan, countries like Af African countries, they will always be there just getting comment. You're wasting your data online and you're not getting anything from it. So from 23.1% in 2008, 47.1% or 3.4 billion of today world population have access to what? The internet. So out of what? 7 billion, we have at least 3.4 billion that are what? Connected to the internet. Just tell me, if you have to do what? Get into digital marketing, if you have to take your business into digital marketing, you will never exhaust this total number of population. You can never exhaust this total number of population. Out of the 27 million people that are located, that are found in Cameroon, we don't have up to 4 million that are connected to the internet. Now, how do I actually get these statistics? When we are running paid ads, we are able to know the total number of people we can reach out to when you create that ad. And trust me, if you start running ads now, to the next 10 years, you're not still going to exhaust that total number of people. Now, let's look at the number of social media users. So, the total number of social media users as of today is 4.76 billion. We have 4.76 billion people that are using social media platforms. So the leading social media platform is Facebook, followed with, with about 2.96 billion users. Then we have YouTube, 2.51 billion. We have WhatsApp, 2 billion. Instagram, 2 billion. WeChat, 1.31. 
TikTok 1.01, Facebook Messenger, 1 billion users. We have the, the Douyin, 750 million, Telegram, 700 million, Snapchat, 685, and the list continues. These are statistics which have been generated as of 2023. Now, let's look at digital marketing in today's market. So with the advent of advance in, digi in digital, online and social, along with the evolved being customer experience, digital marketing has gone from being an isolated discipline and instead become what? A staple in today's business world. In Cameroon, I always take reference to Cameroon because I have actually studied the digital landscape of Cameroon and other developed countries. Okay? So in Cameroon, not up to 5% of the companies are what? Connected to digital market. If I start listing some of these companies, I'm going to take an example. When I was in Cameroon, um, I was working with Bamenda Police Cooperative Credit Union as the credit officer. Now, if you have to Google, if you go online right now, you Google the top 10 credit unions in Cameroon. Bamenda Police Credit Union will be in top five or maybe top three. But trust me, search online. You are not going to see a website. You are not going to see a social media platforms. You are not going to see this company which is at the top level being connected digitally. And this goes to, to other companies or microfinancial institutions. If you have to actually see the companies that are leading in terms of the digital space in the financial sector, you're going to be talking about what? Banks. We are talking about foreign investment. UBA. MTN. Orange. Only foreign investment they are making good, which means that they are the ones really tapping the money. They are the ones making good use of the audience which we have, what are the home-based companies doing? The reason why you should be studying digital marketing is to change so many things. You should be ready to do what? To expand shape the digital marketing in your environment. This is very, very vital, very, very important. Any questions, please, before we continue? Questions? Before I proceed, Please, if you have a question, you can ask. Please, as we kick off, as we continue with the class, your mic should be muted, please. When your mic is not, when your mic is on, it's interrupting with our class. Okay. If you have a question, I'm seeing so many hands up. I don't know if those hands indicate that you have a question. Shom, maybe I should go by names. Shom, do you have a question? Ngalim? Ponyui? Obi? Manfred? Godwill? Uh, yes, sir. I wanted to ask what about the apps, um, like applications? Because we see that most companies now, apart from having a website, they equally try to have applications. What are the advantages of having applications over other um, uh, media and all of that? Okay, Thank you. now, now uh, I don't really think this, this question which you've asked, you know the answer to the question. How many times do you visit? How many times do you use your PC? How many times do you use your PC in a day? There are people that have computer. That I can say more than 50% of those attending this class don't have a computer system, right? Those who have a computer system only open their computer maybe when they want to do a particular activity. But you're always on your mobile phone, which means that if you want to be visible, if you want people to be able to see your business, you need to take that business to the mobile, which means you need to have what? An application. Because majority of the people do what? They do use their mobile devices. They, they do use their mobile phones. So it is very vital. It is very vital for these companies to have a mobile application if they really want people to do what? To be able to have access to their services. Is it clear? Is 
Is it okay? Can we proceed? Okay. Yes, sir. No, Thank you. Okay. If there are no question. Let, let's let's proceed. So, how does digital marketing work? We have research. We have strategy. We have implementation and what optimization. Now, I'm going to explain to you guys what these various um, steps do mean. Okay. Now, when I talk about digital marketing, if I want to carry out digital marketing, it means I have something I want to give out. Right. I either have products which I want to sell. I either have services which I want to render, or I have an event coming up which I want people to attend, or I just want to pass an information. I just want to share an idea, right? So for me to do that, what do I do? I need to connect to the internet, and then I share my idea. I can share my idea on social media platforms. I can share my idea on the website, and people are going to do what? They're going to see that information. Now, for you to actually start sharing that idea, you need to carry out what we call research, right? So if I have a product, let's say I have a bottle of Tangy. I'm the, I am the producer of Tangy water. I want to, I want people to know about this product, right? So for me to do that, I should be able to create a content, right? I should be able to carry out research and create content which I believe that people are going to like the content is going to be captivating and people are really going to see how good the content is. That is what we call, that's what we mean by research. You need to carry out research about the product, the service or the events which you are about to, you are about to advertise. We're about to share information about. Okay. Then the next is what we have strategy. What are the strategies you're putting in place to ensure that your advertisement goes successfully? You can ask yourself the first question you can ask yourself is which environments, which countries do I want to create this ad? Do I want to showcase my ad? Those are the strategies you're putting in place. Do I want to show my ads to Cameroon in general? Do I want to show my ads to Africa in general? Or do I want to show my ad to specific regions, specific cities? Am I going to target both genders or I'll target male and female? Even though in, 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 our, in our society today, we don't, we, we, there, are, there, are, there are some genders we don't even know if it is male or female. Do I want to show my ad to... Um, Specific age groups, those are the strategies you need to put in place. Now, what is the implementation? Implementation now simply means you are now doing it. You've actually built the strategy very well. You've designed your ad. So there are two ways of building your strategy. We have the organic, we have the paid. So when you're building strategies for an organic ad, you just have to maybe design your flyer. Then you, you have your caption and you just post it, right? You post it. But when it comes to the paid ad, you need to define your audience. Because with free ads, you cannot define your audience. You cannot define your audience. But with paid ads, you can't define your audience. You can determine if you want your ads to be shown male, female, age group, maybe between the ages of 20 to 25, and so on. Then we have, okay, we've talked about implementation now is you doing it. So you're either actually creating the ad, you go to Facebook, you click on create a post, you post it, you write a text, and you click on publish or whatever. That is implementation. Now, optimization. Now, what is optimization? Optimization now is the process of you making sure that this ad actually reaches to the right audience. And how do you make sure that this ad reaches to the right audience? When it comes to websites, you need to make sure that the content which you're creating is very good. Once the content is great, then optimization is really going to take place smoothly. Okay? So optimization simply means Create content which is very good in the eyes of the platform which you're posting and to your audience. In that case, for, platform, like for social media platforms, they have, they have a restricted content which you need to post, right? They restrict some kind of content. You don't need to post content that is not really pleasing in the eyes of others. If not, maybe you're going to get some restriction or they are going to ban you from using that social media platform. Websites, you need to create very good content. Don't copy people's content and you post on your website. Okay, Make sure that um, you follow the rules and regulations which have been stated by that platform like Google. That's what we call optimization. So once you're able to carry out your optimization very well, you are going to get good results. That is how digital marketing works. So you need to begin by your planning. And when I mean planning, you need to do your research because there are some people that just get up today and say, I want to start selling dresses. Is, do you really believe that you'll be able to you'll be successful with this business? The next day, 
There are some people that you open maybe their WhatsApp status. Today they are selling dresses, tomorrow they are selling shoes, the next day they are selling mobile mobile phones. In fact, they sell everything. They sell everything sellable. You don't have a focus. Before you end, before you get into any business, you should have a plan. You should have done your research. Is this business going to be very good in my environment? You are in a, you you are you are located in Baminda, and you decided to start selling iPhone. The whole day you are posting iPhone 13 Pro Max, iPhone 14 Pro Max, iPhone 15 Pro Max. In an economy which you know things are very difficult, where do you think people are going to get money to, to buy those products? And at the end you say the business is not moving. You need to get products, services which you know your community will need. And for you to be able to note that, you need to carry out your research as simple as that. Then you build your strategy, you implement that strategy, and of course, optimization is going to take place. Any question? Any question? Any question, please? Okay. If there are no questions, um, we are going to end here for today. Okay. But before you go, please, let me, I'm going to be forwarding the list for the roll call. Okay. Baron is asking, how can your research be carried out? Okay. Um, in terms of doing your research, now, when it comes to research, you should be asking yourself if you're starting that business for the very first time or you already have a business and you're thinking of how you can advertise that business. Those are the questions you should be asking yourself. Now, if you don't have a business idea and you actually want to kick off the business, you can go online, okay? And you search. You, first of all, the first thing you need to put in, you need to consider when doing your research is you should know what you are passionate about. What do I love doing? What are the things that I know if I'm going to do it even at a time of stress, I am not going to feel that stress. So you should not go in a business purposely because you want to make income. The passion should be there first before any other thing. The income not follows. Because if you actually get into something which you really love doing, trust me, you are going to put in every effort to ensure that you become successful. Even if you are not successful within the next one, two, three months, you are going to continue doing it because what you love doing that. But if you're going in for the purpose of what? Income. By the time you advertise on your Facebook, most people just advertise on WhatsApp. That's the only social media platform some people know. When they advertise on WhatsApp for the first week, no sales. They're going to drop it. But if they actually bought products and they thought because you didn't do your research very well, you just took your money, bought products you kept in the house, especially products that will expire in the nearest future. Every day you will be posting because you, have the, you cannot do anything with those products, right? But if you borrowed it from someone like what Amazon does, if you take the product to sell for someone, once you've been able to advertise for, the, for one week and you're able to get sales, trust me, you go and keep it back. You give it back to that person. The business is not moving. You give back the product. So first of all, do your research. Carry your market. Do what we call um, market survey. Look at what people really want. What do people need in your environment? Some of you limit your sales just on WhatsApp. You may have about 300 people that see your status every day. 400 people. It's going to end there. So let's assume all those 400 people actually bought your product. Who is going to buy the product again? How are you going to continue your marketing techniques? So we are going to, before the end of this class, we are going to give you other techniques which you need in order to do what? To market your product or to be able to build a very good foundation in the digital marketing space. Any question? Please, we have to do roll call before, so nobody should leave the class. Questions? So. I'm going to generate um, the list for the roll call. Just give me one minute. I'm going to do that, and you guys should be able to fill the form. Our next class will be um, tomorrow from 7 p.m., please. Tomorrow will be from 7 to 8. 7 to 8. Um, guys, let me just forward the list before we... Um, 
proceed. So give me one minute and uh, I'll be done with the list. If you have a question, please, you are free to ask while I generate this list. Okay, guys, I'm sending the list in the, um, the chat. You just check the chat area and uh, fill the form from there. I'm just going to forward it right now. So just click on that link. Okay, you can click on the link, then you fill it with your name. So your name, phone number, and email address. Those are the information I need from you. Any question? All right, so in our next class, um, we are going to talk about the digital marketing modules, okay? We're going to look at some aspect of digital marketing, then we are going to introduce you to the various modules, okay? Then in our tech class now, we are going to begin with the various modules. We're going to talk about social media, we're going to talk about Google Ads, we're going to talk about SEO as well. So those are the so different social media, uh, sorry, so those are some of the digital marketing modules which you should uh, know them, okay? So if you have a question, question. Please make sure you feel. The form, make sure you feel the form. Very important. Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead, please. If you have a question. Yes, sir. It's not really a question. It's just that the form you sent, uh, it's not opening my phone. Is it possible I do it later? Yeah, Maybe where you connect. Okay, please. My... Those who have attended this class, if you're unable to access the form right now, once the class is done, contact me and I will forward the, I'll forward the form to you. I won't be sharing okay, the sir. forum, so you can only get it for me privately. Okay, sir. Okay. So if you can't get the form right now, please make sure you get to me and uh, you get the form. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we've actually come to the end of this session. So grateful you guys were able to make it today and I'm hoping that we are going to have the same turnout, all right, in our next session. So I'm going to, before, the day runs out. I'm going to conclude if you're going to have a session tomorrow or it's going to be on um, Friday, okay? So I'm going to conclude on that so that we can have a full segment or a full session. So on Tuesday, we're actually going to have two hours of continuous learning. So please make sure on, yes, on Friday, we have two hours of continuous learning. So please make sure you join um, Friday's session. Thank you all and uh, see you all in the next class. Bye-bye for now.